everybody, and welcome to Florentina and Friends Storytime by Speak of Events. I am Julie Schindler, your host. And today we are celebrating a really special story time because this is our eighth, seventh, eighth month um, doing story times for Florentina and Friends. We met Florentina last year where she was already in her fight through neuroblastoma cancer. She had been at it for about four months. And when we met Florentina, we were building out a big event for her, a motivational charity event to um, bring awareness to her fund. And through that event, we were able to create these story times for Florentina as a way to lift up her spirits through her journey and as she fights neuroblastoma cancer. And you've seen Florentina grow and develop and speak up throughout her own cancer journey right here on Speak Up Events. We've had 59 stories with Florentina and all of them can be rewatched on our YouTube channel. I wanna welcome all of our audiences today. We have our Facebook uh, Speak Up Events live page. We also have LinkedIn joining us today. We are live on YouTube, and we also are going live on Clubhouse, which is an audio-only social media app where you can do from your phone or your pillow like me. So today, our story time as we celebrate amazing authors that have come and joined our story times. We've had over 16 unique authors that have come on and brought their storybooks to life. And you're going to meet another one of them today. And she is our repeat heart that has joined our rainbow, Miss Amanda Cottrell. Hopefully, we're going to be able to check in with Florentina because she is on the last stretch. This is it. We have gone through a year of neuroblastoma cancer treatments, and Florentina is on the very last week of her oral cancer treatments. And this weekend, she's going to be finishing off all of her scans, the end of treatment scans that are available in the UK. And as you can see at the bottom of our screen is the Just Giving Fund. We are raising funds for Florentina to receive the bilevalent vaccine, which is a series of vaccines for neuroblastoma patients that are not available in the UK. And so far, out of the 280, 2,881 hearts that have joined our cause, we, you have helped us raise over 195,000 British pounds for Florentina's flight to New York. So we have about 55,000 pounds left to, left to raise. And when I did the math, it's only 22 pounds for 2,500 hearts. So if we can get 2,500 hearts to join the Just Giving Fund at the bottom of this page and give 22 or 22 pounds, we will reach our goal for Florentina. And we have just a couple weeks left. We get the end of her scans and then she is on a flight and getting prepped for New York City. And she will be at the Memorial Sloan Kettering uh, Cancer Center in New York. So you can help us by donating and we wanna get on to our story time and meet our author. So Amanda lives in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, and she is a mom to Miss Ella. And Amanda is also a teacher. And she has been, when she's not on her summer break, um, she's teaching our hearts and creating our future. But her special, her special um, skills and abilities are in art. And she is infusing that into all the children that she gets to meet through the books that she writes and through the children that she teaches. And now she's expanding her growth and in creating art, mindful and creative. So I'd like for you to meet Amanda and learn about some of the books that she has and a really fun way that you can get involved this summer into writing your own book. Let's say hi to Miss Amanda. Hi, everybody. <laughs> I'm excited to be back and on here today. And uh, hopefully I'll get to meet Florentina this time. I'm so excited that she'll get to 
come to New York soon, which will be on North America. And yeah, it's such so exciting, all the stuff that you guys have been doing. And, and so many, like her story just touches my heart because I can't imagine being a parent and, and having to go through that. And so all the people who have reached out, like, just thank you so much. And um, everybody's helped me too be able to donate um, a little bit because at each book that I come on and read for the next month, a dollar from each book sold goes to towards your guys's project as well. So um, yeah, I hope that I'll be able to give some too. <laughs> March, we had I Am Empathetic and that was um, the give for March. And then April, you came back with I Am a Rainbow. And that was when you were also going through, you're a yoga master. And so you teach yoga and you also teach yoga to children. And you were going through a series that um, you were showcasing all of the yoga and your books through the month of April and May. How did that turn out for you? Um, well, I do a bunch of different things. I've been trying to work a lot on on getting out there and, and just spreading the message of mindfulness and creativity to kids because I essentially believe we're all creative. Even people who don't love to paint or draw are essentially creative too. They just have their own unique gifts that maybe um, society doesn't view as, as creative, but they essentially are. Like even if you're a coder and you like to code on the computer, you can be super creative on the computer, but someone might not be able to draw a stick person, right? And so, I think that, or, or somebody might be super gifted in woodworking, but not view themselves as creative when essentially they truly are. I think we all have our own creative gifts and, and even people who are YouTubers have their creative gifts of, of getting themselves out there on online. And, and we just have so many options now with the internet of how we can empower people and, and spread our creativity. And I feel like when we, when we lock into what our unique creative gifts are, that's when we can become authentically ourselves. And so I want to empower kids to become authentically themselves through their creative gifts. Well, I love that you've created art, mind, mindful and creativity, and you have built up over 16,000 followers on Instagram yeah. and you are coming on almost daily, giving tidbits and videos uh, that you can connect with not only yourself, but also your children and ways to engage with them throughout the summer. Your videos are so inspiring and I just want to let you know, keep, please keep it up. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, I started like a YouTube channel and and we'll get them all up there as well. And so essentially, there's just a bunch of different things that I'm really trying to do to empower kids and to get the message of empowerment out to kids, but also to parents too, because when parents feel empowered, then that just trickles down into their, their children too. Or when teachers feel empowered, that trickles down into their classes that they teach. And so essentially, it's just like, giving people those gifts of like believing in themselves. Yeah. And your stories have been weaved throughout our story times because our kids get to choose. And we had a few hearts on and we had a whole bunch of books that they got to choose and they picked your story and we, oh, how to, um, it was the, it's okay to feel. Yeah, and I don't even think I read that one online yet. <laughs> you didn't. No, but the girls, we went through it together, and they were able to tell me about when they're angry or tell me about a time they felt inspired. Um, so your books are just, they're easy to read. They're easy to carry along with you. Florentina has taken them to the hospital with her. There's just so many ways that you you touch our future um, through your words and the way that you create them. Could you tell us a little bit about how A Better Tomorrow was created? Well, essentially, I, um, I came home one day after a rough day of work and I had two kids like arguing with each other and they're two like really fantastic kids. And essentially, it was like... Ugh, guys like <laughs> what is it that we what we, what is it that we want and like what is it that we can do as a class to like create a better tomorrow so I like jotted down my ideas in, in my notebook and then I took it the next day and I was like what do you guys think and they're like yeah turn it into a book yeah. it took me a long time essentially to turn this one into a book but I think it's actually my best one yet for my digital drawings because I learn along the way too like everything that I'm learning I'm learning as I go, because I do so much of it myself. And so 
I essentially had to teach myself how to draw on um, my iPad and <laughs> and essentially the first couple of books, like the book that you held up was my very first one. And that was all just drawn by hand and then um, and very, very different pictures and very, very different um, forms of of art. And essentially, I just took pictures of it and then put them in to create the book. And essentially, um, I wanted lots of different like I had somebody one time say like, oh, people aren't going to like that book because it's not cohesive. Like the pictures are so different. I said, well, essentially, that's the purpose of the book is because I want kids to be able to recognize that their emotions are just as different as as the forms of art <laughs> and and some of them are actually photographs of my daughter and but just like changed a little bit like using a filter and so um it was a really it was a neat I, I liked the feedback but I also was like you you made my purpose like you you're, you're and so like if somebody like um complains about that in the book then I'll be like well part of it is too for me to show kids that like their art is as amazing as well and I, and I really want to empower kids to view themselves as authors and as as illustrators and and artists too because I know in my class like especially now that I'm teaching grade five oh I have the most amazing artists in my classroom and like they could draw like they could be in books already and and I think we really need to uplift and empower people. So one of my goals, too, is eventually to start a publishing company that will help kids get their books out there and, and help adults get their books out there to the world as well. Um, because I just think that when we empower people to, like, believe in themselves, we can change the world. Oh, my goodness. Absolutely. And you are doing that with A Better Tomorrow because you've also added a way for children to get involved. So yeah. there is a writing contest that's going on in the month of July right now that children can submit their what there's a better tomorrow starts today's story. Could you tell us a little yeah. bit about that? Yeah. So essentially, I'm hoping I haven't got any um, any stories in yet, but I'm hoping that I'll have a minimum of 10 kids write a story about how they would create a better tomorrow and even send me in some artwork and then I will put it all into a book and get it out to the world and and then they would see be able to see their book in print and their and their writing in print because I know that I've been teaching for over 15 years and and there are some amazing stories that kids write and then essentially they just sit in their notebooks and and nobody ever sees them and so I want to do a couple of of different writing contests and, and to get more kids involved throughout um, where they'll see their amazing stories in print and, and when we can pick a topic together even that they want to write and then create a book and get it out to the world and then do another topic and create it. And so on my website I have even four schools to um, to essentially hire me to to help them get their school book out there and then it could be a fundraiser for their school too where the books would then um, help fund whatever it is to to get their the kids stories out to the world and, and it would have the kids art and everything and then the school would own the rights to to the book and to the to oh. their stuff on Amazon so essentially like Amazon just has opened up so many possibilities for people as indie authors um, because you can get before the traditional publishing would take two to three years to get your idea into print where I can have an idea and, and if I get all of it done and get all the illustrations done I can I can get it up there depending on the complexity of the book like if I'm doing just a journal or something I can get it up in a week and I can tell you I live in my journals they have yeah. amazing um easy oh we got a little <laughs> Um, they have just been amazing, easy to write in. And I just, and the colors are just amazing. And you also have them, so they're prompted. So these ones are just lined pages for me, but you also have them for children and adults that yeah. to prompt through their day. Yeah. So there's this, I've been working on some like low content journals, which I can get out essentially in a week. And um, they are too, like what is because my daughter has anxiety around road trips. So we created a road trip journal together so that she would be able to like write her thoughts and feelings about about the road trip, but also have activities to do in the car. So and, and essentially, like there's so many options and for kids to get their ideas out. So essentially, I worked with my daughter on getting that one out 
to the world, but also I have some that would tie into the I'm a Rainbow book on the chakras um, because it essentially is um, helping kids like monitor their chakras and and be able to like tap into to recognizing how their bot when their body feels a little bit off and then being able to to journal it and and when you can write it down you can begin to express it in so many different ways and and that really gives kids tools of of self expression and self awareness and it gives them a daily habit too it gives them something to go to that's theirs and it prompts them so it teaches their subconscious mind that structure of what getting it in and getting it out and verbalizing it and i just what you're doing i am so inspired by you and just so thankful for you to come in and share with us today a little bit about what's going on in your world and read us a story. All right. You ready for me to read the story? For a story. I'm going to okay. pop myself over and give you the screen. Okay. All right. A better tomorrow starts today. To all the future leaders of the world, shine brightly, my dears. You have the power to change the world also for my daughter. Let's start today and make a better tomorrow. When I watch the news or learn about the past, I wonder how these awful things continue to last. We learn about wars in schools, which makes me wonder, why were we such fools? We learn about indigenous tribes that were almost wiped out. I wonder why people chose to push them about. Sometimes I hear stories that are just not nice. I wonder why do we allow things to turn into a vice? What if we all made a promise to ourselves and peers today to focus on joy and not be so gray? Everyone is doing the best that they can until they know better Things might seem like a jam. What tiny step could you take to give others a break? We can start to question the past to change and evolve, show empathy to others and begin to resolve. What lessons can we learn from history? I can shift my thinking to create a better. Life can become better now, do you? Know how? If everyone started to choose kind instead of cruel, we could begin to change the world by starting in our school. What if everyone started to lend a helping hand? I'm sure we could achieve something quite grand. If each day we did one thing to make the world a better place, then we could flow with love and grace. Every person has the power to make the world great by focusing on this moment and choosing positive over hate. You can't change the past, but don't worry, you will have a blast by starting now and choosing kind and empowering your mind. If each day, or sorry, each day we have a chance to make a positive impact, it really depends on how we choose to act. And I think that's such an important lesson is that so much of how we view the world and, and how we view things um, from ourselves is how we choose to act. So we really always have a choice is we can view something as, as a negative or we could turn it into what can I learn from this situation? And so I have a bunch of ideas in the back of this book for teachers to use in their classrooms um, on how we can make it better tomorrow. And I would love, love, love to have at least 10 children write in so that I can help them um, or I can, I can get a book of, of a bunch of different stories out to the world on how we can make a better tomorrow starting today. And I think that that really kids, so many kids can empower us um, and, and make us think as adults on how we could make a better tomorrow. And I know that my daughter helps me do that too, is, is how even within our house, we can, we can begin to make a better tomorrow. Oh, I love that. And I'm sitting here thinking of Florentina, how could we create a better tomorrow that there isn't cancer? 
Mm-hmm. And if there was, what would that look like for children like Florentina in a new hospital experience, taking the pieces of her experience that she loved being in the hospital? Oh, I have, there's this beautiful, big, huge yellow butterfly that is flying over us right now. Uh, so I love being outside because it's birds and butterflies and it's 80 and sunny. But to create a better tomorrow where there isn't a world of cancer, I would love to help Florentina write that story. And hopefully we can get her in your book because I think oh, they're amazing. <laughs> yeah, I think that between the two of us, we could really help her create what that story looks like. And I know that there are many children who are surviving and thriving through cancer, that this could be a really special portal for them to tell their story. And I just felt like shivers up my arms. I'm like, we should just do that, even make it her own book with like pictures and illustrations and, and a better tomorrow would be a, a world without cancer. And what would that look like? And, and how could we do it? And <laughs> it's just like so many, or, or even just a world that could, could be better for kid, people who have cancer and, and what that would look like from her perspective as a child, right? We're going to make, we're gonna make that happen because mm-hmm. I think that, that would be very special. And I have at least five children that are connected with Florentina that are going through neuroblastoma cancer and they could help us change the world and create a new tomorrow without cancer or a better tomorrow with cancer. Yeah. And that, that empowerment of kids, like, could you imagine if instead of it saying Amanda Cottrell at the bottom, it was like a better tomorrow. And then the five children as the contributors, it'd be so amazing. Oh, we are going to make that happen. I, yeah. I am filled with goosebumps on the possibilities. And every child, every child out there can get in and creating a better tomorrow and get in on this writing contest. Whether that's your words or your art, you have a story within you. And it's time for you to speak up. And it's time for you to share it with us. And we're here to listen and to broadcast your stories out there into the world. And I think too, like like the wor- the stories on a better tomorrow could even just be something silly, like how to deal with your brother better. <laughs> or I mean, like in the on my website, it says like it can be even silly stories, like how to ensure that if someone farts in an elevator, <laughs> you can like deal with it, and that would make it the world a better place. Like yeah. there's just like so many inventions that could happen that could make the world a better place. Place, and it could be like an uplight like a light, funny story. It doesn't have to be serious. It doesn't have to be like, well, we can cure cancer and we can do this. It can just be things, stories that make you laugh, right? Because laughter makes a better tomorrow as well. And I think sometimes when we take really deep topics like this, we forget about that lighthearted humor. And so I purposely on the website said like, they can be serious stories or they can be funny stories because sometimes kids are just like, they have the funniest sense of humor and when you let them write their stories and you allow them to be funny in them you're just like you can't stop laughing right and and that laughter brings joy to others around them and so it doesn't have to be a serious story and I want people to know that too like yes curing cancer would be an amazing way to make a better tomorrow but also bringing joy and laughter to others is another way to make a a beautiful tomorrow how to teach your brother how to eat his peas right (laughs) different things that you can bring in. Oh my goodness. From animals to food, there are so many ways that we can create a better tomorrow today. Yeah, absolutely. There's, there's even just by like picking up, like going and picking up a piece of garbage or saying something kind to someone or smiling at somebody in the grocery store that looks like they're having a rough day. Like you never know how your small act of kindness could like, change somebody's life completely and I've heard of stories of people who are like really struggling in life and one person was like nice to them in the grocery store and that completely shifted their life and and they like will come online and and be like whoever you are thank you (laughs) thank you because you have no idea how what a dark space I was in and this stranger was kind to me and that completely shifted my mindset and I think that we don't understand that we have that power within us um, just to be kind and you, you never know how you're going to affect others when you, when you choose that. Yeah. 
and smiling with your eyes. There's just mm-hmm. something so special about that, especially with masks. When you can find a way to smile with your eyes, you can connect with others um, non-verbally. And which is really, really a special way that you can be out there in the world and not have to say anything, but know that I see you and I'm smiling at you. That's actually something we practiced in my classroom when we did have to wear masks. We practiced like showing different emotions with the masks on so that we could see if we could guess what emotion they were trying to portray with the masks on still, because so much of um, how we view people is is through their facial expressions and when we're that this part of your face is taken away we lose that ability so we worked in my classroom on like can we still recognize some of the emotions that people are trying to portray with the masks on our faces and it, it was like really powerful did you um, have any big highlights from that of of emotions that could easily be seen versus others that were yeah, they, they, like the smiling with your eyes, that's what it made me think of is because we could tell when people were happy and we could tell when they were angry, but those kind of in-between emotions were harder to for us to guess, right? Unless they were showing it with their whole body. Like if you're just looking at them as a talking head, it was a little bit harder. But if you could show the emotion with your whole body, then it was a little bit easier. Um, so that I think is something that's important too to recognize is that that we, our facial expressions and our body language um, tell so much about how we're feeling and what's going on on the inside too. Oh, for sure. Oh my goodness. This has been such an inspiring story time. My heart is full of the possibilities that each of us have to create a better tomorrow today. Absolutely. We all, we all have that power and we might feel like some small, like I'm like, I'm just an elementary school teacher, but like, just being able to get my stories out to the world and and to hear that it's that it's helped other kids like I I told you originally when I very first came on that that first book the it's okay to feel was just meant to be one book in my classroom I was going to print it off on my mac and and just use it in my classroom and if it helped one kid then then it did its job and essentially the right people came into my life to teach me how to self-publish on amazon and the fact that it's helped kids it from all over the world that I don't even know is just like, it's like so humbling and, and it makes me like so happy to hear that. Oh, it really is. And you are making a difference in our future. And I want you to know that we are seen and we see you and we hear you and keep doing what you're doing because you are bringing color into my life and the lives of all those that you touch. Well, I, that's, if that's, I think, what, if we could empower everyone to do that, and then we would live in such a better world, right? And, and we'd be able to solve problems so much more quickly because we could collaborate and when we're all working together on, on how we can make the world just that much better. And, and kids have so many ideas because they aren't um, at that point where they, the society has been like, no, 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 no. And if we listen to more kids, they we potentially might be able to change the world in a better way because because they don't have that filter of society saying no to them <laughs> if we were able to like and there's so many amazing things that are happening with different um organizations i know i love my students love mark rover and he's an amazing youtuber and he's done things like create a robot that picks up garbage in in rivers with like different organizations and, and essentially he was a nasa um engineer turned YouTuber who's now changing the world just because his world videos went viral. And then now he's just gone off in this amazing direction of empowering kids. And I just find people like that so empowering because they, they're influencing people around the world in such a better way. And, and, and he did this glitter bomb, like a couple glitter bomb ones too, which is like using signs to like, yeah, just to like make the world a better place and to make people think like, oh, these people are doing something bad, but like, how can we make it a little bit lighter? And then also like, just make people think like, maybe this isn't the best thing to do. And so I just like, my heart goes out to people who are, who are doing that work and doing it on a big scale because some of those things like there's there's so many things we can do to make the world a better place and and we just need an idea and then to connect with the right people and it can become a reality 
Yeah, just like our story times. <clears throat> I live horizontally on a pillow. Not eight months ago, I met a little girl who needed a story. And that's what has created this. And it wouldn't be possible without all of the volunteers that have poured their hearts and their stories out for Florentina. And every week she gets to come here for a story and color and connection and allows her to speak up a little bit more every single time. And I'm just so honored to have you in our rainbow and as part of our one of our hearts that just keep inspiring us every single day. Well, I'm so happy that I connected with you because I just think it's like what you guys are doing is amazing and, and how you're helping kids is absolutely amazing. So it's just so powerful, like the work that, like you said, you were laying <laughs> laying horizontally in so much of, of your day and now you have this like spark of life that's just, you're empowering people across the globe to help, right? Well, and I want you to know you have a doppelganger in the UK. You have another um, author that has come on our story time, but she is creating kind of the same world that you are doing here in, Can in Canada. She's doing in the UK um, and a lot her rainbow warrior sing along. Her name is Sharon Calvert. And I don't know if you've met her yet, but when I when I speak with you and I speak with her, your heart's vibrate the same energy and I'm excited. I hope that you two can connect because you both are making a huge difference in teaching children yoga um, and mindfulness and building out their own creativity. Um, and I'm excited for you to help us um, with our school of color that we are soon to be launching where we get to connect with a hundred children as a way to build out a platform for Florentina to speak up after her cancer treatments. We are building out a school of color for a hundred children in Zambia, Africa. And for every Saturday through the end of the year, Speak Up events will be hosting story times teaching these children to color. And we realized in our very first story time, many of the children have no connection to color or very little in their life so far. And so this is a way for us to reach them globally and to teach these children how to see color and to adapt it into their lives. And of course, hopefully um, connect hearts around the world. Yeah, I'm super excited to, to be part of that too, because I love I love teaching and I love empowering kids and, and communities and so, that's kind of my global vision is, is to how can we make schools a better place that they're empowering the kids and empowering the community around them. Well, this is a really great opportunity because we just helped um, the Salecho Orphanage in Zambia, Africa purchase land. So they just were able to purchase through um, donations of events that we were hosting through April and May. A group of people came together and raised enough funds for this orphanage to purchase their land. And on that land will be a school. So I'm excited for us to help them build out a platform and a foundation of a school for these children that we can connect to every single week. And if you would like to join our rainbow, please reach out to Speak Up Events um, and myself, Adi and Sunny, and I would be glad to connect you with our team of hearts that are building a Speak Up School of Color. I love it. I love that you're going to start a school on the with the orphanage as well. Um, one of the things that is my goals for the fall is to do like a longer video on YouTube each each um, week that'll have like a mindfulness aspect, some art, and then um, like some writing tests or or some research tasks that kids anywhere could do. So essentially, like they could watch the videos and then go in and do it for the week and then come back and share or something. I haven't quite mapped it all out in my brain yet, but but that's my goal is to launch like a longer about 10 minute to half hour video that would give teachers and, and schools um, an empowered way to, to empower their kids throughout that week. Um, that's a great idea. I'm going to connect with you because we have a case of um, um, composition notebooks that are heading to them for journaling. So I'm, I think that there'll be a really good connection that we could create and help them. Oh, I'm just so excited. Yeah. yeah. 
doing amazing work and I and I know that probably Florentina is just amazed at the community that surrounded her through this through this journey, right? All around the world. We're 5,000 miles away and you're probably almost half of that, if not the same. So this mm -hmm. will be exciting to see how many hearts that we can connect all around the world to create a better tomorrow today. Yes. Thank I you, Amanda. That. Thank you so much for being here. I love coming on. Thank you so much for having me. We are going to say good night to everyone. So sorry that we didn't get to have Florentina, but she will get to watch our broadcast. And we are going to flow her some love. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day.